Ah, pixel dance. How do we create this offset mid-century modern pattern? Come along with me. Check it out. <laughs> pixel dance. Woohoo! It's a mid-century modern look. Flag colors, bright colors with a uh, watercolor, a Sharpie. We're gonna have some quick fun. Hi, it's me, Kathleen, Happy Gal Driscoll. And uh, I wanna take you along on this journey, how I created Pixel Dance. I hope you can come along and learn something. And if you like it, please subscribe. For this pattern, I decided to use my Canson watercolor paper, 140 pounds, 11 by 15. This will do just fine. I am looking to do a watercolor with bright colors. I'm using GenCraft. Got this at Amazon, I think. All right, now I'm just gonna set myself up to where I'm comfortable. I will be using the Fine Touch Round Brush number six. The reason for this is I wanted to make a small pattern with small flowers. In case you're wondering what those pink cups are, those are pink silicone cups for wine that a girlfriend gave me, but I find I actually use them more for watercolors. It's easy for me to wipe off the water on the silicone. Because I want my pattern to be very specific, I am using a wet on dry technique. That means there will not be a lot of blooms, there will not be a lot of spread, it's just me going in and making the design exactly how I want it to be. You will also notice that I didn't do an outline first. I am just jumping in and being spontaneous. Jumping in and putting my flowers down. I wanted to make a specific pattern with a limited palette. So I go in and I know in my head just wanted to make small flowers to start and then see where it took me. People that know me know that for the most part I'm an explorer. I like to put something down on the paper and then see where it takes me. Not everybody's like this. Some people need to draw it all out or have the whole concept in their head already and that's fine. There's no right way or wrong way to do it. You just have to do what feels right for you. For me, I knew I wanted to make a small pattern, a small pattern of small flowers all over the page and leave some white space. That was the idea and the concept that I started with. I am only using one color here for this first group of flowers. I am only using the magenta. I am not using different colors. I am just using different concentrations of the magenta. Some has more pigment in it and some has less pigment in it. Since magenta will be my main color, I am making sure that I put those flowers all over the page. That way the whole piece will work cohesively. The next color I decided to use was Scarlet. Isn't it gorgeous? I decided to keep the variations pretty small here. I wanted to have slight variations of tone and color to give it a certain effect overall. I wanted the overall composition to be light, airy, springy, something really happy. And now you see I've added a third color. This one is tangerine. It's gorgeous too. I just love it. So this is where I decide I do not like the orange flower that I put in here. So I quickly change from the orange color to the yellow orange. I wanted it to be a bit brighter. So now I'm going to the yellow orange. Much happier with this color. This is also when I decided to start varying my flowers.
You might be wondering the method to my madness. First I lay down all my paint and then later on with a pen I go in and do all my detail. And now I'm introducing yet another color, cadmium red. Who doesn't love cadmium red? I mean my goodness. So now I'm adding dots, I'm adding filler just to round out the piece. And then right away I am jumping in with a new color which is crimson and I'm adding completely different shape flower here. I'm doing this to add visual interest. Fuchsia alert! Fuchsia alert! I'm diving into fuchsia! And this time I'm adding swirls. Swirls are always fun. And since we're in the colors of pinks and reds and oranges, we're going to introduce some amethyst. I love amethyst. I love amethyst dots. So I'm putting them everywhere. Composition's getting very busy now, isn't it? Still a lot of white space. We're good to go. Next color up is Calypso. What I like about Calypso is that it's a green, but it's a blue green. The blue green is kind of cool because this is basically a fantasy piece after all. It doesn't have to be exactly a moss green or a vibrant green or any kind of green. It's the green that I want it to be. This is basically a fantasy piece. I am not copying flowers from nature. I am just giving the impression of nature. None of these flowers actually really exist. I'm not copying an image. I'm not using an image for reference. These are just coming right out of my head. And so maybe they don't look real, but that's okay. It's a fantasy piece. This is my world. Welcome to it. As you can see, I'm adding stems and vines and leaves. I'm just having fun. It all creates visual interest. It's quite the contrast from all the stems and all the leaves compared to all the flowers. At this point, I do stop and reassess and then decide to move on with another color green. You can see I'm just using the olive green to fill in little tiny leaves in between all of my flowers. Filler, 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 just like a bouquet. The secret to this kind of painting is that it's repetition. You will notice that my leaves almost look exactly the same as my flowers. This is a repetitive look. I love this kind of pattern. More repetition on a pattern. Now I have dot, dot, dots, but they're tinier this time. And now here I am repeating my swirls, but in another color. Yep, it's that orange that I rejected earlier. I've decided to bring it back into my painting. I'm using it in dots. I'm using it in swirls. It's filler, baby. And now we are basically done with our watercolor. Step one complete. Now this is where the fun begins, where we really turn it into a mid-century modern piece. We do black outlining, black detailing, and we offset the lines from where the color is. What's fun about this is that you don't have to be 100% accurate. It doesn't have to be perfect. And also, I like to do the lines several times. I go one, two, three with my strokes, one, two, three with my strokes. Now, I do have to apologize to you because I put the camera in the wrong place here. So I'm going to just kind of fast forward to kind of show you a better angle. Here we go. Now here you can see 
a little bit better how I've outlined my flowers. I just give each side one, two, three strokes. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be a little loosey-goosey. You're just trying to define the flower a little bit more. And what is so great about this is that the contrast of the black against the pinks and the oranges and the yellows really makes it pop. And here you can really get to see some of the details. You can see I'm not being very specific. I just love those flat colors and the loosey-goosey style of all the ads that came out of the 50s, 60s, and early 70s. Let's not forget our berries. As you can see, I let the pen roll around four, five, six times, making sure I am creating white space around the piece as well. Then I add some stems to the berries. This really adds a lot of visual interest and also helps create that mid-century modern feel. It's worth noting here, watch how my wrist doesn't move when I create these long stems. I just pull down without bending my wrist. This helps create long lean lines. Okay, this detailing and outlining part took me about 20 to 25 minutes to do. And if you note, I was constantly turning, reassessing, turning, reassessing, adding more detail as I went. I would turn the paper upside down, right side up, left and right, just to make sure everything balanced out. This is when I decided I needed some more plants. So I just used my Sharpie pen and created these long stemmed plants with circles, black circles at the end, and they mimic the colored berries. But it adds to the piece, it adds visual interest, it adds some depth. So how do you know when a piece is finished? Beats me, you just know. And here we are at the end of my process. Thank you so much for coming along on this journey. I hope you had fun. Hope maybe you learned something. If not, maybe you just enjoyed watching it. I don't know. Really appreciate it though. Thanks for stopping by my YouTube channel. And if you liked it, please hit like, please hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Love you. Now go create now.